Hey, this is Don from Padlock Technologies again with another video. No hoodie on this time, but still got my sassy shirt here. Today, we got a question on doing inter VLAN routing on a Juniper switch. Now, if you're coming from Cisco, very easy to do. You just do your interface VLAN, whatever, give it the subnet on about your business, right? Now, Juniper is a little bit more steps than on a Cisco. And I can tell you from personal experience and from, you know, mentoring junior engineers, when they see the Juniper way, since they're so used to Cisco, at first, they do not like it because there are so many, it's just more stuff you got to configure compared to Cisco. But again, as a network engineer, you need to be multi-vendor, right? You can't just drink the Kool-Aid on one vendor and just do that for the rest of your life because no environment is all one vendor. Plus it actually triggers another part of your brain when you have to learn how to do something that you know how to do in one device or one vendor and you have to do the same thing in another vendor, kind of activates a different part of the brain and it helps you with memory, right? If you get good at multi-vendor stuff, you can pretty much start mastering anything you put your mind to. So we're gonna go in the lab. I'm only gonna show you the Juniper switch part. I do have a Juniper router in there. Now the thing about the VMX is they don't support NAT, so I can't do a NAT configuration on that, but I'm just gonna focus on how to do you know, the SVI. We're going to add the, the link to the VLAN, and then we're gonna advertise it in OSPF. Now I did three already. I didn't do one because I was in the middle of doing it, and I said, hey, I got that question. This would be a perfect video. Now, before we get into the lab, if you find any video or any value from this video, please don't forget to share, comment, like, and subscribe to the channel, man. Tell a friend to tell a friend. Bring more people in, help us learn, let's build this community up. With that being said, let's get to the lab. All right, so here's a simple Juniper lab. Nothing really crazy here, right? And like I said before, once you get kind of used to the Juniper syntax, you, you'll get used to like iOS XR. This is pretty much the same like programmatic um, kind of syntax here, right? But so let's go into here now. Juniper, thank you for making a single uh, VM or single uh, node for a switch because they do have something called a VQFX. And if you look at my VMX up here, you have the forwarding plane and you have the control plane. They kind of work the same way, but I just like it in one single unit and then I can do all the configurations from there. So what I'm going to do. We're not going to, I'm going to cover the router part because we don't care about that. We're just going to focus on the switch part. So, obviously we need to log in. I already did this already because I was previously doing this. So, we're here already. So, if I do show route, uh, we'll just do OSPF. Not actually show route. And I'll need to go to CLI, that's why. There we go. Where am I at? Do, oh, see, I put CLIE like a dummy. There we go. Now if I do show route, I do always be up here. Why do I keep forgetting this? It's always protocol. See, this is what happens when you switch different uh, platforms. So here we are. That's what I'm advertising, or that's what the router's advertising. It's advertising its loopback from the router down, right? So we're good with that. Now, if I just do show route, I'll do that. And there's all the routes there. All right? You see some slash 24s in there. You see some 32s, which are the, the SVIs in uh, Cisco land. But in Juniper land, I'm going to tell you, they're called IBRs. So integrated routing and bridging. They're not called SVI. So here's all the routes. Now, if I do show VLANs, you will see. That I have a matches up. I got sales, marketing, legal, and here's the interfaces that are are in them. Now these sales, marketing, and legal they can ping each other. I'm going to do a monitor interface so you can actually see live traffic go through there too. But let's configure the customer service one, right? And do I have customer services VLAN? No. So this is perfect. Let's just go to configure now to configure a VLAN, and this is going to be 13. We do a command called set. VLANs and you give it a name. I'm just gonna customer service. 
dot server customer service VLAN ID 13. Done. Okay. Now the next thing we need to do is we need to create the IBR interface and then we're going to come back and connect that IBR interface to this VLAN. So the first thing we need to do is set interface IBR internet routing origin dash or dot 13 family inet address i think dot 13 is going to be 10 1 4 254 slash 24 done okay now we have to link that ibr address to the vlan and we do that by doing set vlan customer service right l3 interface ibr dot 13 done okay now as you can see compared to cisco it's a lot more stuff you got to do right in cisco you just do vlan whatever internet vlan whatever subnet done right and this you got to do a little bit more work right so we created the vlan we created the ibr which is the svi technically we attached that interface to or that ibr interface to the customer service and now we need to put the interface into that vlan now there is a way you can do that with the same VLAN command, but I'm gonna show you the long way, right? Because usually you could do set VLAN customer service, right? And then go interface GE. Uh, I think that's three. You could do that command and it will do it for you, right? But I'm gonna do it the other way, which is a little longer of configuration. So you go to set interface GE-000. Uh, zero zero three, sorry. Unit zero, fam family, Ethernet switching, right? And then you go VLAN, member, customer. Where is it at? Oh, I didn't. I got to commit it first. So let's commit this first because it will not show me. It didn't until I commit that customer service VLAN doesn't exist. All right, so now let's go back and actually set the VLAN. So set interface GE-003, unit zero, family, Ethernet switching, VLAN member, customer service. And this is what I like about Juniper, man. And it, since it's so pro programmatic, like once you create the stuff, it kind of remembers where everything is, right? So it kind of usually, if you start typing just a little bit of what you just configuration just did, it will show you the configuration. Like, oh, you want customer service, so that's a good part. So now we commit check the lifesaver command right here. All right, so you're successful there. So we can commit now. The commit check, like I said, is a lifesaver because. You don't want to commit something and it blows up your network, right? iOS XR does have this as well. I, again, Cisco, I think this should be a commit check should be like that should be on every iOS imaginable, right? Again, y'all need to combine one iOS, but if you're going to have different iOSs, commit check should be in every single iOS going forward. I'll get off the soapbox there. So now we go to show V, uh, let's go to run show VLANs. And there you go. So now you see that you have a VLAN called customer service. Is it legal? So we got legal, marketing, sales, whatever. So now if I go here and let's just give it an IP address. So IP 10.1.4.1 slash 24. Default gateway is 10.1.4.25. Now we're going to try to ping our gateway here. And we have that. And now we're going to try to ping sales, which is 10.1.1.1. And as you can see, we can ping 10.1.1.1. So that's your inner VLAN routing on Juniper. Now let's advertise that new SVR, IBR, I'm about to say SVI, IBR in the OSPF. So we're going to do set uh, protocol OSPF area 000, 
interface IVR 13. Now watch this. Now, you know in OSPF and Cisco, you just do passive interface default, and you do no passive interface, whatever. Well, in Juniper, you could just do passive right on the interface. So watch this. Passive. Done. So I'm advertising it in OSPF, but I'm not sending OSPF field hellos down at IVR. So this is for people that you don't want to send OSPF, you know, hellos down the SVI, or in this case, the IVR. You just put that passive command and you're done. So now if I go up to this router here, uh, let's see where we're at. Show route protocol OSPF. As you can see, I'm advertising 10.1.1.1, uh, 10.1.2, 10.1.3, and now 10.1.4, and then that's the loop back for the switch. Okay, so that's all my uh, that's all my uh, OSPF routes going through. Now I did tell you I'm going to show you something a little cool here in terms of monitoring live traffic in a Juniper switch or Juniper device. So what we're going to do is we're going to use the monitor. Let's roll up out of this first. And then we're going to monitor interface, and I'm going to do GE Pass 003. Now I could do traffic if I wanted to, but I'm just going to do that. And that pulls up the monitoring in Juniper, right? So you can tell data is actually going through if, you know, you can check out the bytes and all that good stuff here. Now, as you can see, we got something here. You got some output. Now you got 0000. zero, zero, zero. Now watch what happens when I try to ping again. Ping. And now you see traffic input bytes. See that as it going up input and output input and output input and output input and output. So that's a very cool feature in Juniper for when you want to do general traffic statistics to see, you know, inputs and outputs going through the interface. You can see it live by using the minor inter interface command. So I gave you a little bit of extra in this, not just the inner inner VLAN routing, but that's it that is inner vlan routing in a nutshell so what we did is we created the vlan we created the ivr which is technically sei in cisco we attached the ivr to the vlan we attached a port to the vlan we gave the you know supplicant an ip address validated that we can ping back and forth we uh, added it to ospf we added the ivr to ospf and gave it a passive command so we don't send hello packets down that interface or down that VLAN. And I showed you a little bit of extra stuff with the monitoring command in Juniper to monitor generic traffic. So I'm gonna hit the Q button here to get out of that. That's it in a nutshell. I hope I answered your video, I mean, answered your question with this video. Again, if you haven't already, please don't forget to share, comment, like, and subscribe. I appreciate it if you did it already. If you didn't, doesn't cost you anything but a click of a button. This is Don from Padlock Technologies again. Thank you and have a nice day.